Okay, so let's take a look at 4.5, exploring the properties of exponential functions. It says compare linear, quadratic, and exponential functions. So A, how do you know if something is linear? Well, this thing is linear because if you go to do your uh, first differences, now your x values are all going by the, up by the same increment, so that allows you to take the first differences. Taking the first differences, 3 minus 2 gives you positive 1. Also, 4 minus 3 gives you positive 1. 5 minus 4, positive 1. 6 minus 5, positive 1. 7 minus 6, positive 1. And 8 minus 7 is positive 1. As you can see, all of those are the same. When the first differences are the same, this is linear. It's a linear function. Okay? And it says that the first differences are the same. Okay? For a quadratic function, however, you would notice, again, when you go to do a, a quadratic function, now you wouldn't know that this is quadratic, however I'm telling you it is, but how would you know it is? Well, you would take your first differences, um, but you can always start taking finite differences, again, if your x's are going up by the same increment, which they are. Now, if you go to take your first differences and do 40 minus 20, it's going to give you positive 20. You do 50 minus 40, that's going to give you positive 10. 50 minus 50 is just 0. 40 minus 50 is negative 10. 20 minus 40 is negative 20. And negative 10 minus another 20 is negative 30. So you actually end up with the differences, the first differences, not being the same. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go take a look at your second differences. So when you go to do your second differences, you're going to do the exact same thing. You're taking the differences from the first differences. So 10 minus 20, that gives you negative 10. 0 minus 10, negative 10. Negative 10 minus 0 is negative 10. Negative 20 minus negative 10 is negative 20 plus 10, which is negative 10. And then negative 30 minus negative 20 is like negative 30 plus 20, which is also negative 10. So you can see that the first, the second differences are the same. The graph of the curve is called a quadratic, or you can write parabola, okay? And the second differences here are the same, okay? So that's how you know if something is quadratic or linear. Now let's introduce to you exponential functions. So I'm telling you that this is an exponential function, but you wouldn't know that. This is the first time you're taking a look at this. So a function where the variable x is the exponent. So I didn't give you the equation for this function, but <clears throat> that's what an exponential function is. It's a function where the exponent is your x. So again, to take your first differences, you can go about doing this because you have your x is going up by the same increment. So if I go to take my first differences and I do 200 minus 100, that gives me 100. 400 minus 200, that gives me 200. 800 minus 400, that gives me 400. 1600 minus 800 is 800. I have 3200 minus 1600, which is 1600. 6400 minus 3200, which is 3200. And as you can see, these first differences are not the same. Now you can go and do your second differences and you'll start to notice that those aren't the same either. But what you can do here is there actually is not what, there's not a common difference in this situation. There is what is called a common ratio. Because a ratio, if you think about what a ratio is, a ratio is just division. So if instead of doing common differences, we did divisions and we did 200 divided by 100, that gives me 2. I am doubling to go from here to here. If I did 400 divided by 200, that gives me 2. 800 divided by 400, that also gives me 2. 1600 divided by 800, that also gives me 2. And 3200 uh, divided by 1600, that also gives me 2. There is a common ratio here of 2. Now you also understand that the common ratio is otherwise known as the base of the function. Now we'll get to this a little later, but whatever the common ratio is, that is the base that your x will be attached to. So some way, somehow, 
the formula for this thing will have a y equals, and on this side of the equation, you're definitely going to have a 2 to the power of x. You may have other numbers included there, judging by what's going on here, but I won't get ahead of the game yet. That's just so you understand that whatever the common ratio is, that is also the base of the function. So just going ahead a little bit. The first differences are not the same. Okay, The ratio of the first differences are the same. So when you take a common ratio, notice that in order to get from this number to the other number, you're always doubling. So you're always multiplying by 2. How did I get that though? I did common ratios, which is 200 divided by 100. 400 divided by 200. And of course, I'd like you to um, to uh, try to graph this thing here. So if you graph this thing very quickly. Sorry. And uh, each tick is 1. And we'll say that each tick on my y, so each tick on my x's are just 1. So this is just going to be 1, 2, and, and so forth. But each tick on my x is going to be 100 on my y is going to be 100, 200, and so forth. So my first point is 0, 100. My second point is 1, 200. My next point is 2, 400. Right there. My next point is 3, 800. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then my next point is 4, 1600, which is off the page. It's going to look something that looks like this. Now, this isn't the full exponential, um, what a full exponential function looks like. A full exponential function actually looks like this, where this side keeps going forever as well. Now we're not going to write that right now. Just this function right here starts at zero and goes forever up. However, um, it does continue forever that way. So if I continue with my next problem here, let's take a look at example one. It says graph the exponential function y equals 2x and then identify some important information about the graph. So I am going to do, I'm going to graph this y equals 2 to the power of x and then identify important information about this graph. So how would I go about doing this? y equals 2 to the power of x. Well, I'm going to pick a window and my window I'm going to pick from negative 2 all the way to positive 2 to figure out what's going on. So if I plug in x equals negative 2, let's see what happens. This is y equals 2 to the power of negative 2. And good thing we've learned how to deal with negative exponents because this is the same as 1 over 2 to the power of positive 2. So this is the same as a quarter. So when I plug in x equals negative 2, I get y equals 0 0.25 or a quarter. Now when I plug in a negative 1, that's going to give me 2 to the power of negative 1, which is a half, or 1 over 2. If I plug in a 0, 2 to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0 is just 1. If I plug in a 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 2. If I plug in a 2, I'm going to have 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. So this is what it looks like. Now, if I go to graph this thing very quickly, to show you what it looks like, if this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis, again, all these things just go up by increments of 1. I have the point negative 2, a quarter, which is right about there. I have the point negative 1, a half, which is a little higher. I have the point 0, 1. I have the point 1, 2. Then I have the point 2, 4. So it looks like this. Now, if you continue this drawing forever, it's going to look something like this where it goes forever to the left and forever to the right now it doesn't go it goes forever up also but it does not go forever down as you can see this this line here as much as you want it to extend this negative three negative four five six seven as much as you extend this this is going to get closer and closer to zero but actually never hit a height of zero and there's an important word for um, a line that the graph gets closer and closer to but actually never touches. We'll get to that in a second. 
So state whether this is increasing or decreasing. Of course, if you're reading from left to right and you look at this is increasing in height, so it's definitely increasing. Your y-intercept, well, your y-intercept happens when x is 0, so your y-intercept in this case is 1. Your domain, your domain is x is an element of all real numbers because it goes forever to the left and forever to the right. Your range, on the other hand, is y is an element of all real numbers where, in this case, it gets closer and closer to 0 but actually never touches a height of 0, okay, no matter what points you put in for x. It's going to get closer and closer to the height of 0 but actually never touch 0. It is going forever up though. So how do you write that? Well, y is greater than 0. Not greater than and equal to because that would indicate that it also hits 0. It's just greater than 0, okay? So let's take a look at what I just spoke about. A horizontal asymptote is the closest horizontal line that the graph will never cross. For the graph of y equals 2 to the power of x, the equation of the horizontal asymptote is, so a horizontal asymptote is a line, a horizontal line that this picture gets closer and closer to, but actually never hits. And if you take a look at it, it, keep, it gets closer and closer to this horizontal line. It gets closer and closer to the x-axis. The name for the x-axis is y equals 0. That is y equals a height of 0. So the equation of the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. It gets closer and closer to the height of 0, but never touches. That is what a horizontal asymptote is. So this graph uh, represents exponential growth. Okay, so this is growth. All right. So let's take a look at the next one. It says, example two, graph the exponential function y equals a half to the power of x. So the same thing, then identify some important information. The same thing we're going to do to this one as we did to the last one, we're going to plug in values for x, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Obviously, you can carry this out forever left and right, but I'm going to just plug in this window so we get a good indication of what this looks like. So this is a half to the power of, if x is negative 2, what does this mean? Well, we know how to deal with this from our x exponent rules. When you have a negative exponent, this ends up being 2 over 1 to the positive 2. And so squaring both top and bottom, 2 squared is 4, and 1 squared is just 1, so y equals 4. Okay? And likewise, if you plugged in a negative 1, that's also going to flip the fraction around. This is going to be 2 over 1, so this will be just 2. If you plug in a 0 here, this is going to be a half to the power of 0, which is 1. If you plug in a 1, that'll be half to the power of a 1, which is a half. And if you plug in a 2, that's going to be half squared, which means half times a half, which is a quarter. As you can see here, these numbers are exactly opposite of these numbers here. This one grew, this one, the same numbers are happening, but it is not growing, it's decreasing. Okay, instead of the base being 2, the base is 1 over 2. So, if we go to graph this very quickly, using a, a graph here, I'm going to get negative 2, 4. I'm going to get negative 1, 2. I got 1, 0. Sorry, 0, 1. 1, a half. And 2, a quarter. So, if you connect this, this is going to look exactly like the other one, except it is decreasing. And so, state whether it's decreasing or increasing, it's definitely decreasing because the heights are getting lower. The domain of this thing, x is an element of all real numbers because it goes forever to the left and forever to the right. The range of this thing, well, what's the, oh, sorry, the y-intercept of this thing? Y-intercept is also 1. The range, y is an element of all real numbers where, and again, the lowest it hits, it actually doesn't hit it, it, hit, it gets closer and closer to y equals 0 but never hits y equals 0. So it's y is greater than 0, not greater than equal to. And then the equation of the horizontal asymptote, same thing, y equals 0. And this represents exponential decay because it's decreasing.